So I have the day off from work today, and what I thought I would do is, one of the things that I like to do when I have some off time is, obviously, I like to look at videos of what other people are doing, which is why I do these videos here, so that there's folks out there that, like me, can watch other folks. So, um, today what I'd like to do is go through a series of different cook kits that, kits, cook kits that I use. Um, some I use uh, almost every time I go out, some I only use on very rare occasions. There's one I haven't used at all yet. There's some old favorites that everybody knows. There's some innovative things that, um, well by the definition of innovative, I don't think they're too high speed, low drag, but they're, they're mine. Um, and so we're going to go through kind of um, start to finish what I use in order of how often I use them. How complex they are, how heavy they are, and actually, if you really look at it, it's more of what is it that that's my favorite, and what do I like to use, regardless of the weight I'm going to carry, um, the things that I like, the things that have worked for me, the things that I um, know aren't going to fail me uh, in any given condition. Um, again, weight's not a huge priority for me. Uh, I don't carry a lot of stuff. I'm by no means am I a minimalist. By no means am I an ultralight. Um, I am. I, I pack what I want to pack. So I'm going to move the camera and kind of go through one at a time the um, the various cook kits that I have. Uh, in my humble opinion, and it's just my opinion. That's all it is. There is no one perfect thing for everything, um, and, and there's none that's going to meet every situation. But I've got a couple. So today I'm going to go through that, and then later this afternoon. Um, I'm going to shoot some additional video of doing some baking. Um, I see some bakings, and I don't think that they've done a, a bad job. Obviously, they've provided themselves with an edible product. Um, most of the baking um, stuff is either prepackaged or pre-mixed, just add water, which is what I'm going to do. Um, but um, I don't know how to do a whole lot of things, uh, but I've been a cook for a long time. I've been in the restaurant business for a long time. And I like to eat, and I like to cook. So when I'm outside, one of the things I do enjoy doing is uh, is cooking for myself or cooking for whoever is in camp with me. So I'm going to run through a couple of basic um, bread things, and I might have some failures. I'm going to do a couple new things um, in this short little series on on baking and cooking and stuff. But there's some things that you can use, and there's some things that you can do to um, to improve your um, enjoyment of the outdoors. Uh, by no means should should you ever expect any situation to be a survival situation, and I'll talk about those things. Um, if I put myself into a survival situation, I have to fall back on, on skills more than gear, and that's, that's not a video that I, that I want to do. There's plenty of videos on that. There's plenty of schools on that. There's, there's a great military in our country, uh, any branch, all services, good service, um, Semper Fi Marines, but... Um, you know, none of that is what I want to do. So all I'm going to do is talk about gear, my gear, no reviews of other people's gear, no reviews of, of that type of stuff, just my gear, what I do, what I use. And then later today, like I said, I'm going to do some baking or some cooking because um, it's my day off. It's a beautiful day here in southern Alabama. It finally got, or uh, where I am in Alabama, it finally got cool enough. Um, last night it dropped into the 30s. There was frost yesterday morning on the, on the grass. So um, moving forward, uh, I'm going to try to keep this within that 15 minute. And I may very well have to do uh, split segments because I end up being long-winded. I'm already at like four minutes right now. So I'm going to cut you off and I'll cut you back on with a little bit closer view. So we're in my garage and I still don't have everything unpacked from the move. We bought the house too long ago for it to be this um, still disorganized. But uh, just kind of go from panning what we're going to look at today. And then I'll set you down and we'll go over from right to left um, the various kits that I've accumulated. So I'm going to pan it down just a little bit because I know that I can put it here and be seen pretty well. So uh, first kit, I'm a sucker for Boy Scout um, memorabilia. And this is, this is not a... Um, great trails or or whatever it is that you can buy it in anywhere it's they're, they're fine they doable i've got uh, i don't i don't like being negative about anything so i'm not going to be but this 
This uh, I got at a thrift store that's actually got the Boy Scout seal on it, and uh, I've got the uh, original pouch, and it's got like Mikey or something like that. So it, it's some young man at some point took this kid out in the woods with him um, on on probably a really good time, and I like I like knowing that. I, I call me a sucker, call me a sentimental uh, for nostalgia, but um, Boy Scouts and Boy Scouts of America, despite whatever you um. Your, my humble opinion is that it's still a good organization and done a lot of good things for a lot of kids for many, many years. So it's the standard one. It's got a little plate. It's got a little pot. It's got a lid for the pot. And it's got a frying pan uh, or, or another plate or however you want to use it. You've all seen it. I'm going to leave this lid out for next um, next one. But it's nothing new. They're everywhere. You can pick these up. Um brand new at Walmart or Academy or whatever for just just a few dollars. There's not a lot of money investing in that. There's nothing wrong with them. It's aluminum. I'm not scared of aluminum. You can boil your water. You can do all the things that you need to do. It's a good cook kit. I, I carry one of these quite a bit. Um, but there are other ones that I carry more. So I'm going to set that aside. The next one I want to talk about is a uh, is a little hobo stove setup that I use with alcohol. Um, it's not isopropyl alcohol. It is um, sold under the brand name Heat. It's methanol. It's a wood alcohol. But this uh, this hobo stove is is exactly what it is. It's it's a can. I cut a hole in, poked a hole in with a church key, made a little gas stove. Um, that you cover the top. It's called a penny stove. What I found is pennies melt, but a quarter doesn't. So there's my penny stove. Um, just a little piece of the can that the stove was made out of that the stove can sit on inside of the hobo stove. If I need to use gas, it sits right on top of it. Inside the groove on the bottom of the can. I don't use this very often. Um, I don't. I don't like carrying flammable um, liquids. I, I just don't. Lots of people use them. Trangia use them. They're, they're successful. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just my personal preference. I don't. I don't like carrying uh, flammable liquids in my pack. Um, you, you can get a good skid burn. What I do with this, though, I do have a spacer so that I can set something on top of it and cook with. Uh, to allow airflow, and I've actually got a bigger can lid that, believe it or not, this lip, you can make a tortilla, you can fry bologna, um, you can make small bannock, and you can lift it off, especially if you have a pair of pliers. Um, it doesn't it doesn't have to be a gas stove, obviously. You can burn wood pellets, sticks, put it next to your fire and, and push coals in, so that you can control the heat. You don't absolutely have to have the fire inside of the can. Um, you can tell that it's been used. Uh, it's a cheap investment. It's a great, this is, I, I want to say this is the first one that I built myself uh, before I moved on to other things, but it's doable. It's easy. It's simple. Um, it can store within itself um, depending on what cans you use. But, um, this one doesn't with this particular can, but I've got this I don't actually use a whole lot of. Um, you can put your bottle, your bottle will sit on top and it'll boil eventually, or you can pasteurize um, if you keep it at 160 or above for any length of time. Uh, usually, look it up, I'm not going to give you specific times, I don't want to be wrong. Um, pasteurization is above a certain temperature for a certain amount of time. Do your research on that. Don't don't take my word for it. I'm by no means a bacteriologist. I'm just Christopher from Two Alabama Yankees enjoying myself outdoors. So.